I'm Renee Ritchie, welcome back. And if you are trying to decide between the brand new Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air and the equally brand new M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, if you wanna know if you can save a few bucks by going Air or what you'll get if you go up to Pro, or if you just really wanna understand what the differences really are, then wow, but is this the video for you? Because I'm gonna go over just all of it. So hit subscribe and let's do this. Okay, so I'm fully aware the finish on your MacBook may be the least important thing in your life. But if it is important, then you can make your decision really quickly. Because while both the MacBook Air and Pro come in that traditional bead blasted silver and space gray aluminum, only the MacBook Air comes in gold. Pros are obviously just way too serious for gold. So if you wanna match your gold Apple Watch or iPhone or whatever, you're gonna to have to go with the MacBook Air. If not, if silver or gray are just far more your thing, well then, let's keep going. The MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro are just exactly the same size if you're looking down at them, just staring straight at the logo while they're closed. X-axis, Y-axis, both the same. But also, when closed, the Z-axis, the amount they stick up from the table, is slightly different. Mostly because the MacBook Air is a wedge that tapers down towards the front where the MacBook Pro is uniform, it just stays the same. And that makes the air very slightly higher at the back by like 0.02 inches, but much, much thinner at the front by 0.45 inches. It's not a blade, it's nothing Kratos could just lob it a crack in, but it is a wedge. The air is also slightly lighter, a whole whopping 0.2 pounds lighter. But honestly, it's nothing I've actually ever really noticed on the identical Intel models over the last couple of years. The air shape is certainly cooler looking and more aerodynamic for the sake of Kratos, but they feel about the same, especially if and when you're just lugging them around. So if you do think that slight difference will make a difference and if lugging around lighter is better for you, then you're gonna wanna go with the air. Now here, previously I would have urged any photographers, videographers, color graders, you know, fans of wide color to go pro instead of air. But with the new M1, Apple's given the Air's display an upgrade. It's gone from sRGB standard to P3 wide gamut, which means the richer reds and the deeper greens you see in the more cinematic color spaces. So that's the same now as the Pro, just like the 13.3 inch diagonal size, the retina high density, and the True Tone technology. That's what tries to match the ambient color temperature so whites on the screen don't look too blue or too yellow, but more properly, consistently paper white. Where they differ though, is that the Air only goes up to 400 nits of brightness and the Pro goes 20% higher to 500 nits. So that'll look better for things like playing games, watching videos, reading when in brighter, especially outdoor light. So if you want or need that, you'll need to go with the MacBook Pro. Apple has just ended, terminated, MDK'd Intel. And in its place in these new MacBooks is the new M1 system on a chip. And you can think of it like the A14 that Apple introduced with the iPad Air 4 and iPhone 12, but it's more like an A14X style variant, the kind we may very well see in the next generation iPad Pro. But it also has some specific IP for things like hypervisor and emulator acceleration, you know, really Macity Mac stuff. And both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have it for iStorm efficiency cores, four Firestorm performance cores, 16 Apple neural engine cores, and eight graphics cores, mostly. You can save a few bucks and get a MacBook Air with only seven GPU cores instead, if you really want to. They're the same exact GPU cores, they just test it out with seven working instead of eight. So instead of throwing those away, hurting yields and increasing costs, Apple is just using them for lower cost MacBook Airs instead. So that's one difference. You can get the MacBook Air with either seven or eight GPU cores, where the MacBook Pro only comes with eight GPU cores. The other difference is that the Air has no fan, no active cooling at all. It's like an iPad Pro, whisper quiet, dead quiet. But that means if it's doing a lot of multi-core or sustained workloads, like gaming for a long time or rendering a long video, the only way it can reduce temperature is to ramp down the processor. So it'll burst to the same performance levels as the Pro for things like launching apps or opening web pages, but it can't sustain them for as long. 
The Pro, on the other hand, has active cooling. It has a fan, so it can sustain its performance, even multi-core performance for just much, much longer. Not indefinitely like the new M1 Mac Mini, but just much, much longer. But even ramped down, an air is still gonna just smoke 90% or more of the other chipsets on the market. So you really have to want that sustained performance to really want the Pro. Both also have the same Wi-Fi 6 built in and Bluetooth 5.0, and both have two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports. And just think of those, think of USB 4 as USB-C that also supersets and includes Thunderbolt 3. And they only have two because the M1 chip only has two Thunderbolt lanes built into it. And maybe a future M1X chip for a beefier MacBook Pro, Mac Mini Pro, or iMac will have more of those. Both also have the same SSD options from 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. And both come with eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of unified memory, RAM, on the chip. And that just means the CPU and GPU, everything just shares the same memory pool, which reduces latency. And Apple's using a version of LPDDR4 or low power memory, which maxes out at 16 gigabytes on the M1. And again, maybe the M1X will go higher even if it has to use less power efficient memory to do it. Since both of these machines are on the ultra light end of Apple's lineup and have historically maxed out at two Thunderbolt ports and 16 gigabytes of memory anyway, and since the Air now has two times SSD speeds like the Pro and the swap will be just so fast that for many tasks you really won't notice, I don't think anyone considering these laptops should consider that a deal breaker. If you think you will, then you'll absolutely wanna hold out for a higher end pro, hopefully next year. Otherwise, if like a parent, all you want is quiet, then all you want is the air. If you do do those heavier workloads though and need that longer sustained performance, you'll want the pro. While the performance levels of the M1 are impressive, the battery life is most impressive. The Air, in its sleeker wedge-shaped chassis, will get you up to 15 hours of web surfing and 18 hours of TV app video playback. That's optimized video playback. The Pro, with its bigger battery, will get you up to 17 hours of web and 20 hours of video. And yeah, Craig's not staring at the benchmarks. He's staring at that battery indicator. So here, you just have to decide which ridiculously long battery life you want. But if you are doing those heavier pro workloads, you will benefit from that longer pro battery life. Both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro have the same teeny tiny 720 megapixel FaceTime camera, but both use the image signal processor in the M1, which is the same as the A14 that powers the iPhone 12 to make the best of that tiny situation. They're not optically great, but they should be computationally pretty good. The speakers and mics are different though. Where the Air has wide stereo speakers, the Pro speakers have high dynamic range. That means both can project a sound stage around the MacBook and around you, but the Pros will just be fuller and crisper. The Air also has a three mic array with beamforming, but the Pro has what Apple calls a studio quality mic that just eliminates a lot of the extraneous noise. Basically, it sounds closer to a USB mic and if you ever need to record a podcast or an interview or a voiceover, anything like that, and you've forgotten your fancy mic, then this can help see you through in a pinch. So if you want better sound, both in and out, then you want the MacBook Pro. Yes, it's magic keyboards with beautiful scissor switches just all the way down for both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. They also have the same force touch trackpad and the same touch ID on the power button for biometric authentication for everything from wake from sleep to Apple Pay, and they both have physical escape keys. The big, big difference here is that the Air has a traditional row of function media keys up at the top, where the MacBook Pro has the OLED touch bar screen, which tries to surface controls and shortcuts in a more visually discoverable, if way less tactile way. If you hate it, as some just really, really do, then the Air is here for you. If you love it though, or are just willing to ignore it, then the Pro is all yours. The MacBook Air starts at 999 for the seven GPU model and 256 gigabytes of SSD, or 1249 for the eight GPU model that also includes 512 gigabytes of SSD. The MacBook Pro starts at just 50 bucks more than that, or 1299 for the 256 gigabyte model, but with eight GPU. Really though, it just comes down to a few simple things. If you want a quiet, ultralight laptop with function keys and don't really care about sustained speeds for heavier workloads, or you're just fixated on that gold color, save yourself some money and go for the MacBook Air. 
if you're willing to have a fan and willing or even interested in having a touch bar and you want those sustained speeds for heavier workloads and don't care a whit about a gold option, then go for the MacBook Pro. And if you want more RAM, bigger screens, more ports, then just wait for the next round of Apple Silicon MacBooks coming next year. And if you have any more questions or just wanna chat about any of this, then check out my members only Discord where we talk about, yeah, the Mac, Apple Silicon, iPhones, iPad, watches, gear, workflows, and much, much more. You can find it on Patreon. And yeah, I have Patreon now, patreon.com slash Renee Ritchie. I set it up right after I quit my big media job in March, right before all of 2020 happened and right as I started this new indie channel. And it's great because there's a whole preview section where I share ideas and outlines for videos before they're even shot. Sometimes early versions of the videos before they even go live. Longer versions of interviews when they're available, like 45 minutes with iJustine, and Walt Mossberg and more. And there are even ways to get your name in the description and even the credits of every video. So to be more involved in the community and contribute directly to the creation of these videos and future projects like my new podcast with Georgia Dow, then just check out patreon.com slash Renee Ritchie or click the link in the description. And clicking on that link just really helps out the channel. For a ton more on Apple's new M1 Max, just click the playlist above. I'm gonna be doing reviews, comparisons, deep diving on all the features. So just click the playlist above and I'll see you next video.